Today, on this segment of the Art Supplies Junkie, I'm going to talk about homemade or DIY gesso. I started making homemade gesso because I was painting on uncommon substrate. There are three types of gesso. There's the old master gesso, which is rabbit skin glue and chalk. And that is very difficult to make. And you know, there's the saving of the bunnies. But also, um, that is for making very, very white gesso so that you can get you know, a nice white canvas. These come pre-sized and we don't really need that I like to use um, tinted gesso when I paint in plein air and I would maybe work on this sort of a substrate which is Luan and I would tint my gesso with a gray so that the light doesn't bounce while I'm painting on it and burn my eyes while I'm trying to work out colors and so that's how I kind of got into making my own gesso but I was still using store-bought gesso to do that and just adding in acrylic paint. So then I got into painting on other substrates and uh, I did an entire series which is connected and linked to this um, story, but painting on things like this cereal box. And traditionally a cereal box is not an archival piece of substrate. So we wouldn't necessarily paint right on top of it because it's going to you know, degrade before your painting is uh, passed down to a few family members or sold or whatever. But you know, I, I strive to make things archival, so I started looking into what way could I make clear gesso. And that's when I discovered marble dust. So traditionally, gesso is a medium and whitening or filler, and that's what you would get. The, the rabbit skin glue is the medium and the chalk as the filler. A lot of people online try to tell you you should use baking soda and talcum powder. Well, there's two problems with that. Baking soda is actually a, um, encaustic, and it's very gritty. And so encaustic means it's like bleach, you know, it's, it's eating through things. And so I don't like that as, um, as my chalk. I, I like to use, I would use talcum powder, except most talcum powder has perfume in it. And again, it's going to yellow over time, and you don't really want that in your, in, underneath your painting. Why do you even need gesso? Well, it just binds things to, binds things to paint. It also kind of fills in a lot of bumps and surface to give you a smoother base to work on. So I discovered this marble dust clear gesso, and I think it's just the easiest thing in the world. Um, you know, oftentimes I will start working with, um, you know, I like these, these golden mediums. And this can work as a base for your gesso if you have a huge container. But I never make large containers. I will make, these are all previous gessos I made. I love these Talenti jars for them because, like, I made this one uh, January 19th, 21, this year. And um, that has a slight gray to it. But, um, and then this was one I did for um, last year's project. It's dried up in there, but basically, you know, works perfectly for, for a new one. But the smaller, the better, because like I said, there's no, um, earlier I said, there's no um, antimicrobial in, in these. So you, they tend to, you open them up and they're spoiled. So basically, uh, marble dust is a filler. Uh, the other two fillers, which I mentioned, which are talc and calcium carbonate, which are common. Calcium carbonate is basically limestone. Works perfectly in this homemade thing, except that you want it to be clear. So I got this very inexpensively at AC Moore, which is no longer around. And um, I just want to make this in just a couple quick minutes because what we do is uh, I always way it's exactly 50 50 for this pro for this project um, i weigh out my liquid first and today i'm using and this is really a really this is a clear gloss and i'm using clear gloss because on this piece 
I'm trying to mimic the gloss that you get from the cereal box through my painting. So I'm going to use, and often I will purposely get a flat, um, you know, latex cover, but basically I'm going to work with this gloss and I basically weigh them out exactly 50 50. And so, and I'm, like I said, I'm going to make as little as possible. I'm going to go for about, uh, we'll see, tear it. I work in grams. So this is going to go 100 grams. Okay, we got about 100 grams in there. And it's already the consistency of, I would say, like yogurt or something. It's not, it's not terribly uh, thin and it's not terribly thick. And then I always separately do these because you can't take it back out. So that was 106 grams. So I'm going to do 106 grams. And you will see why I don't measure by volume. I always measure by weight. OK, so take a tad out. OK, there we are, 106. And. In art school, I learned you have to add the dry to the wet. So if it comes out right, it's going to be 212. Essentially, you want to stir this right away. Now, if you feel like you want a thinner consistency, do not add water, add more paint. But I will show you what this looks like. And we're going to spread it on this uncommon substrate right here, right now. Now, I really love to use these because I like the, the shape of the box. And of course, it came like that, but I, that's a huge painting for me. And <clears throat> essentially, this is ready to go as soon as you notice it's absorbed. And I try to scrape and make sure, just like you would with cake or whatever. That's why I like these clear. OK. Set that aside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work right out of this container. But I can tell that this is probably twice the amount of what I need. And essentially, you can see, as you're painting it on, it starts to seal in the cardboard that is this cereal box. And essentially, after the first side dries, I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. And then you will have sealed in anything that could be affected by air on the back. And it will also prevent this from warping later. Essentially, that's all you do. Um, it's very basic. But as you can see, I'm not losing. It does look filmy right now. But as this dries, you will not lose any of the image through here. And I really like to use these because I like to see the little words pop through. And sometimes the colors will, you know, complement the pieces that I'm working on. Um, real quickly, before I'm done with this, I'm going to move this over here for now. Let that dry. I want to show you, I love mason jars along with the Talenti jars because they're easily cleanable. But I will scoop this. I like to use the brush because it's better than a spatula and you want to save this for when you flip over the other side but you need to seal it up right away and there you go you got a whole good jar of gesso there to work on the other side and also if you make a mistake on your painting you can gesso over it and start fresh again you want to wipe the top of the jar because it will not open. It is essentially glue, and it will not open if you don't. And it's like any canning jar issue. You know, you have to make sure the, the, the lid is clean. 
So when that's, and they have devices for you to make stuff go in there, but then I always quickly make sure I make a label for this because I promise you, you won't remember what it is. And you won't know why what's in there. And opening it, smelling it's never good. So I always do a label for these. And um, so this is clear gesso. And today's date, which is what you want to do. And then I want to show you real quickly a couple of things that I have successfully made with this, uh, with this clear gesso. Um, I was really lucky. I was at the Goodwill one day with my friend Jill, and we found the Anti-Saloon League in 1908 had a annual book that they put out with a list of people that were against alcohol and for prohibition in this country. So 1908. So I found this book, and I was like, that's it. I'm going to paint different drinks on every page. This up here, this fellow was the, uh, the president. Anyway, so that was a fun project. But these are all both sides gessoed and then gessoed to this substrate as well. So that's a really good project for that. So you can paint on book pages. You can paint on newspaper. And you know, a lot of things, you can just use clear acrylic to encapsulate it. But the, the marble dust gives a little texture. So you have something for it to hold on to. So that's homemade gesso. DIY, our supplies junkie. Thank you. Next time on the Art Supplies Junkie, we're going to talk about these great Japanese watercolors called kuretakis.